but for the Automax Super GT Series 2024, we are racing at Okayama. No problems at all at the start for the two Supras. Stanley Civic looking a little bit edgy on the way to the first corner, almost losing out to the Impul, and a run wide from one of the Nissans. That's gonna be Ronnie Quintarelli dropping it on the first corner, goodness me. His first ever racing lap in a GTR on Bridgestone tires, and he messes it up in the first corner. That is a big shock as the GT300s get out of the way with the Leon Pyramid Mercedes in front of the Muta Ingen car. So they work their way through the first corner with a much less dirty start. But goodness me, what an error for Ronnie Quintarelli in the first lap of the season, and now he's right in the thick of it. Yeah, that's absolutely disastrous for Ronnie Quintarelli there. I'm not sure position he dropped down to, but he's behind the number 37 Thomas car as we see the other Nismo machine, the number three of Mitsunori Takaboshi, making a bit of progress, finding a way past, I think, the rookie Toyota. I think he managed to get past there. They watch for the red car, the first of the red cars up into P5. So good start for number three Nissan. Bit of a contrast between Quintarelli and Takaboshi. Quintarelli not really, not really doing himself proud oh. in Q2. And we've, we've got, got a stop it. Honda stops. Yeah, the rear racing Honda stop, and that's the RQ's Mercedes that's gone off there at the hairpin. So we've yeah, got big car. issues. Yeah, it's going to be safety car immediately. Kakanoshi Otter, the Civic has come to a stop in the middle of sector two. So uh, not good. Safety car out then on the second lap of the season. Pit lane closes, of course. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Yeah, because the pit that's lane is closed. And there's big Aha. damage to the Enios car. That tells us a bit of a story, doesn't it? And there's the puncture to Yusuke Tomobayashi's Mercedes. So that'll be why well, the tire's actually almost fallen completely off the rim there. Let's have a look. Head down to the first oh. corner. Well, we're seeing a replay. Big lock up. Oh, this is Quintarelli going out wide, isn't it? Yeah, so Quintarelli going wide at the first corner. It's a big mistake. Was there a little bit of contact to get in there? Hard to tell from that angle. I think I'd like to see it from the from the front, really, rather than an onboard. Um, oh, no, there was, yeah, contact. there was contact. There we go, yes. So there was contact. So it's not Quintarelli's getting... fault, really. The Washington getting to the side of Quintarelli. That is, that is not good at all. Here it is from Quintarelli's point of view. So he looks like, it, yeah, he's, he's on course to make the corner just fine until Oshiman yeah. comes barging into his side. Definite contact. So we apologise to Ronnie Quintarelli for assuming he made the mistake. Are we going to see what happened here? Driving up the inside. Oh, yeah, there and it is. Look, there was contact. Get hit, Oshima. Get hit the back of Oshima. Wow, what a, yep. what a terrible start. It's been for a number of cars. I mean, this is, this is you know, these things always say how high quality these drivers are, but they're not covering themselves in glory on this uh, opening lap, are they? Well, considering how often we see in Super GT single file on the first lap of a race, this is, oh dear, well, that's how the RQ's Mercedes got away. We've, we've said in the past that they're not the best of teams in GT300 in terms of quality, but you can't really blame them for that one. They have got going again, but uh, unfortunately on that particular count, they were fairly blameless. Pit lane has been opened now and I try to get taking the opportunity to come in at least because your Oshima is always now. certainly going to go in as well isn't he and then these two teams have essentially just got to hope that there's another safety car later on in the race that gets them back to the mix in some way goodness me look at the damage to the Enios Supra that's almost certainly a game over surely yeah. there's too much damage to that rear splitter yeah I can't start going any further I think they jacking it into the garage so that is that's probably the end for the 14 car kick let's have a look again look in front there's the spin for the Enios Supra and actually the Impul has nowhere to go now did the Impul trigger the spin or did he get collected in the spin that's the real question here and look the real racing car just goes the wrong way yeah. it elected to go right and it should have gone left but it's the benefit of hindsight unfortunately on that one check this out the Tom's Supra has been given liberty to run away with it and the Denso Supra has ended up being caught out and is accidentally holding up the Stanley Honda and the rest of the field so this is magnificent news for Toyota as far as the Tom Supra is concerned they've got an absolute barnstormer of a restart was that tactical or was that an accident green flags we are green 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 here at Okayama as the Super GT series continues under racing conditions and the Stanley Honda is trying desperately to shake off the keeper supercar I wonder how much of that was planned and how much of that was uh, the Denso Supra team falling half asleep. So uh, down the straight comes the GT300 battle. There is the Leon Pyramid Mercedes in front of the Muteringen car and the Subaru. 
No major changes then in the top three. The Goodsmar Mercedes and that beautiful new livery of the study BMW car still very prominent. Well, there's damage to the APR. So damage to the APR car. You can see that the right rear quarter is smoking. Has one of the leading cars just clipped them on the way past? Because that is definitely a limping target now for all the others to avoid. And that is a real problem for the APR car. Now we've got, look, the, the run through the traffic has really benefited Tadasuke Makino in the Stanley Civic. He's now all over the back of Sekiguchi again. Toshiki Oyu's gone with them. It's actually held up Takaboshi a little bit because the Nismo Nissan on those Bridgestones for the first time has actually dropped back quite considerably now from the fray. Tadasuke Makino having a think about it. On the outside, Toshiki Oyu hoping to keep his car there for the next left-hander. And Tadasuke Makino having to get right across the line to chop him across. He can't hold him off. Is that going to be enough? Makino holds him back for the moment. Goodness me, that was a big opportunity for Toshiki Oyu, and he knows it. There's the D-Station Vantage. I'm really impressed with them, considering that they didn't turn a single lap in. They're going to get an overtaking move out of this. Beautifully done. I have to say, the D-Station boys doing a terrific job, considering they didn't do a single lap in qualifying yesterday. They had to change their engine, and they couldn't do that until they shipped the car in from Fanatec GT Asia to transfer the engine out of that car into this one. So amazing that they are as competitive as they are today. Oh, these are both very, very fast types of machinery. Just a bit of a pinch here on Tatsuke Makino. Got to be very careful how he positions the car here. There's one little rub and he's actually kicked up some debris. As he comes through, Toshiki Oyu has to change direction. That's really benefited Tadasuke Makino, actually. And let's watch again. There's the bit of debris. Here comes Tadasuke Makino. Do you know, he is so lucky that didn't get sucked in through the radiator. Look at this battle for second position. It's tightened up again through the traffic. They're going round the Mach 5. And this is just about keeping in competition for Toshiki Oyu. He really had to time that accurately to stay in touch with Sekiguchi and Makino. This is where you can make a real push. Makino's come off the turn slower than Oyu. Oyu's gonna try and go right around the outside of both of them! No way! He only manages to get one, and then he gets boxed in behind the metal live Lamborghini. They come down the back straight, and now Makino and Oyu side by side. This is gonna be tight for third position, and they've got the Uniboss Ferrari in front of them. Oyu's done it. Oyu's done it. What an opportunistic move from Toshki Oyu. Now he's going to get boxed in behind the Ferrari. Makino has another go. Oh, brilliant racing. Number 36, Tom's machine, though, meanwhile. Where you out in front, 7.2 seconds is the gap between Shoto Subo and Yuki Sekiguchi. And Subo is what everything is own way at the moment. Yeah, long gone, the Tom Supra going very well indeed out in the lead of this race. Here comes a chance for the Deloitte Supra. Around the outside, Sasahara. He's going for Otsu on the grass to make the move. Brilliant from Ukyo Sasahara, up into P6. The Super has just dropped completely, as here comes Tomoka Najiri, trying to make the dive up the inside of Azawa. And that's going to be a move. Lovely job from Tomoka Najiri, perfectly textbook move, but Azawa's trying to come back at him into turn two, hoping that the gap is still open. It isn't. Tomoka Najiri holds him. Yeah, well, that's Lambo's why people... going head to head here. Oh, they've hit each other! Oh, it's friendly fire from the Lamborghinis. Boys, this is not cricket. You cannot veer into the side of each other. Let's have a look at it again. Kojima closes the door there. Oh yeah, there was a little bit of contact, wasn't there? Just the slightest of rub, yeah. uh, love taps. Sekiguchi and Oyu now going wheel to wheel as they battle for second position. They've got through the traffic. Oyu's got fired up and motivated. He's got the red mist. So Yui Sekiguchi is going to have to work very hard to keep Toshiki Oyu at bay. And waiting in the wings there is Tadasuke Makino still in the Stanley Honda. As long as he's there or thereabouts, watching these two swabble, he might be able to pick something up. Yui Sekiguchi a little bit wide into the antepenultimate corner. Toshiki Oyu. Hunting him down through the right-hander, sweeping in. This is a very fast part of the course. And then in through that final turn where you've got to just blend the throttle, keep it nice and balanced, then get back on the power as you come down the straight. And Sekiguchi has held off Toshkiyoyu for the time being. And that was a scary moment for the Denso Supra. As we see, the Subaru has been caught up now by both the good small Mercedes and the study BMW. So yeah, Subaru that's rapid, isn't is it? Backwards. I wonder if the Subaru is dying on its tyres. Have the Dunlops not coped with these new regulations quite the same way? Now we have the first of the GT500 cars in the pits. Toshki, or you there from P3? That was the right move because he was clearly stuck behind Yuki Sekiguchi. And then we have Tadasuke Makino right behind him. So we'll see all you hand over to Hiroki Ishiura, the Cerebro Toyota, and Makino give way to 
now Kiyama Moto is in the 400. It's all going to come down to who has the best position, who has the best outlap. Don't forget, no time on this championship. Bit of a rush there for the Keeper Supra, and they've not got out Stop. ahead of the Stanley Civic. No, oh, that Stop. is a furious Ushura, who suddenly boots the throttle and realises the Stanley Civic has got ahead. Oh, Super, Super's gone wide. Iguchi's gone wide, and that's going to be the chance for Katuoka. It looks like the Dunlops are absolutely hanging on by a thread here in the Subaru. And it, Katuoka and Ara are both going to get a run here on Iguchi as a result. Here comes Katuoka. He'll get a perfect run to the inside. Ara will try and go with him. Gets on the throttle slightly earlier. The Subaru is trying to hang on for dear life. Manages to maintain fourth at least, if not third. But Seiji Ara all over him. It just looks as though those Dunlops have cried enough. I can't cope. As we see Atsu Shimiyake leaving the pits there, having taken over the number three car. If they have really soft compounds, and, you know, they only have four sets of tyres for the entire weekend now. And they've beaten the, the Honda out. out. Look, they've beaten the Civic out. They've managed yeah, to beat the Civic, but the Civic surely will sweep around. Yeah, I think on cold tyres, I think the Akin struggles hold off both of these two, but he will be close behind them, probably closer than he might have bargained for. Well, Ishura actually went onto the grass there, and that's really impeded his progress to get back past the Nissan. He panicked. Now he's got to try and go around the outside. He'll be helped by the Leon Mercedes being in the way. Well timed. That was beautiful. Oh, they're going to send the Enios Supra back out. Excellent. Well, it's a free test session. Testing. Yeah, why not? And here's another driver that's still out on the same set of tyres, Bertrand Baguette, as he loses out there to Noble Hiram Matt's Sheet. Don't forget, Baguette had that damage, came into the pits. Uh, under the safety car, clawing his way back ever since. He manages to hang on um, from Nobu there, but I think he's fighting a losing battle there because Matt Sheet is on relatively fresh tyres. Nobu having another look. He's not going to take no for an answer, is he? Or Baguette, yeah, finally has to concede. He's on old tyres. <laughs> He's going to have to hand over to Kazuki Hiramine at some point in the race. Um, and it's hard to see him really salvaging anything from this. Probably just praying for a safety car. He almost created the safety car that he needed there with the, within his battle with Matt Sheet. Get ready for the beginning of a strong era. A lot of article inches have been written about Lilo Wadu. She's kind of come onto the scene as practically as an unknown in GT racing over the last two, three years. But what she's done in that time has been fairly spectacular. And she's definitely going to be a star in the making. So watch out for her on this uh, particular stint. Lap times will be crucial to judge. But obviously with this being her first appearance in Super GT, Expect to be impressed. Lila Wadu has got a lot of talent in her right foot. Don't forget, she is a factory Ferrari driver. So she's on the same level as, you know, Marco Sorensen, who's a factory Aston driver, or, you know, Spengler, a factory BMW driver. She is in that same bracket. Okay, she's much less experienced than those guys. But, you know, Ferrari doesn't sign people that they just find off the street, do they? Clearly, she's, she has impressed Ferrari in the same way that she's impressed Kate Cozzolino that managed to get her this drive was how the connection came about. Um, as we see here, Sasahara is still going on lap 50, and he's actually coming not too far away uh, from, from the maximum drive time. They can't do more than two thirds distance. If you're Giuliano Alesi, you've got to be wanting to take over this car very soon indeed. Look at it swarming around behind the, <laughs> behind the Morelli cars. So get out of the way. You're a lap down, move over, come on. Oh, here we go. Wheel to wheel between the Hurricane and the Subaru. And they're still side by side, two, three quarters later. And now Yamauchi gets the move on Kaguri. That has taken a lot longer than Subaru would have liked. Yep, here we go. This is where the story really starts. And uh, we've got Yamamoto all over the back of Nakayama going for what is, of course, going to be second position once the pit stop race concludes. And round the outside, they're going to get held up here potentially by the Unirubber Ferrari. This is Yamamoto's chance. He knows it. He's going to have to hunt down Nakayama to get into second position. That Ferrari is in all the wrong places at all the wrong times for Nakayama's composure. Yamamoto can definitely make a little bit of ground here. Up the inside, the Ferrari almost pinches the Stanley Honda as it comes through. Oh, There's the Mercedes. The Mercedes. Wow, well, that took a while. <laughs> that took a while. They are taking tires. Yeah, they are. So there goes the Muta Ringing car into the lead. Going to be a long way behind. I think they're, they're at the risk of being passed by the Green Brave Supra here. Let's let's keep a watch for that Green Supra reigning champion squad. There it is. There it is. Already yeah. gone. So that's already gone. They've not just lost the lead. They've lost second as well. They might even lose third. Yeah, I mean this is a huge, huge 
advantage by not changing tyres. I think they are going to get out ahead of the, the study BMW yeah, was, they do. was the next car in line. So uh, still going to salvage at least a place on the podium. They're going to have to, now Yagamoa getting on board the Mercedes now, he's going to have to really push on, try and take advantage of the fresh rubber. Oh, this is an opportunity for the Lexus getting side by side with the Mac 5 and they are trying to force the issue. No chance if you're Kyoto Fujinami, you're not going to give away an easy overtake. And Shinichi Tatagi, Tagagi is going to find that out for himself. Fujinami is not the easiest man to overtake in a straight fight. Takagi swarming around all over the back of the Mac 5. No, you don't. Brilliant racecraft from Fujinami. Just keeping the car exactly where he needs to place it to stop the Lexus coming through. But look at the aftermath of that maneuver. It is an absolute stopgap effect as the field just piles in behind them. Well, our intermittent colleague Jens Sabota has informed us that uh, there was a tiny nudge between Baguette and Oshima on that opening lap. So that's why he went to apologize. Here's the move again on the inside from the Lexus. That's the job done. Finally, Takagi manages to get through. And that's the opportunity as well now for the Lamborghini to come through. The door's been left open and the horses are now going to charge out of the stable. Here comes the Lamborghini side by side with Fujinami. No chance that Fujinami is surely going to be able to hold him off. As down into the braking zone, the Lambo's able to go long. Job done, two places lost, but that was a very close call. I thought Fujinami was about to lose a whole lot more places there because he got out of shape there, but he just managed to cut back in ahead of the Subaru, but he's going to have his work cut out here. Here comes Yamauchi having a look on the inside. Is he going to be bold and dive up the inside? I think he might have a look here. Yamauchi making the move. I think he might just have the grip to go around the outside. Will he or is Fujinami just going to understeer into the side of him? No, Yamauchi backs down. The Lamborghini still in the mix as well. Fujinami lives to fight another day, but he's got a lot. It's going to be a very long final night. Impacts of him on those, on those used tyres. Isn't the team back car? He's pointing the wrong way. Well, what on earth has happened there? Was that nudged aside? Kyoto Fujinami. He's got a. He it's weird been. because he can't spin turn the car. That's the problem. He can't spin the. T he oh, can't spin really the car wheels of the car. So this has ruined the Mac 5's race. How did it happen? Here's uh, the Subaru. Don't tell me he's just charged it. Oh no! Uh, I mean, she'd had enough. I think that might be a penalty coming the way of Yamuchi there, which would be quite a rare thing for the super driver. Fujinami is parked in a really awkward location here. He's got a bit of a gap, but he may not be able to see clearly that he's got the, got the, the time to actually make the reverse. And I think Higuchi probably knows what's coming. But that car is actually going to get stuck on the kerb. Look at it. They're struggling. Oh. He's had a lot of steam come off it. That's him trying yeah. to get the car moving. He's going to overheat yeah. the engine if he's not careful. Good to see full course yellow rather than course safety yellow. car. Let's look at it from the outside. I think this is going to be fairly cut and shut, isn't it? Bang. Oops. Yeah. And usually the stewards do not tolerate that, and especially when it's as clear cut as that. We go green flags and look, Yamamoto is all over Nakayama on this restart. This race is back on and it's electric. But here is the battle of a second and they're in that waft of cars. They're in that absolute train of monstrous machinery in GT300. They've got to be very careful. Here comes the chance for Yamamoto. Nakayama a little bit slow, impeded by the Sintium Corsa car. And this could be the opportunity that has been waited for for so long from Yamamoto. The APR car just dropping out of the line there to get out of the way. But look, Yamamoto getting held up by the Sintium Corsa a little bit too long. That was the moment. And unfortunately, it's gone for the moment for Yamamoto. Yeah, there might be more opportunities, but this is by far the, the best one because there's so many cars in a short space here. And is that contact or that moment there for Nakayama? Yamamoto around the outside. He's going to get for second, but he gets impeded by the same car. Oh my goodness. So the traffic giver for the traffic taker away, doesn't it? We saw that the Pondo Nissan De Oliveira, will be, I'm sure, was struggling with the heavy weight and the tyres on, on that machine as well. It's a little bit little bit of clear air ahead of them now once they get past this Lamborghini but it was a close call for Nakayama and it looks like Yamamoto's got to have a little run around here is he going to have a look up the inside I think he might no he just can't get the overlap it's such a hard move to pull off we do see it from time to time but that time it's, it's, it's a big risk to take isn't it because it's almost certain to end up in contact if the other driver doesn't give you a bit of room I mean how close did we come to disaster there with Nakayama trying to charge up the inside of the realized Nissan we almost had absolute pandemonium at that point. Very well measured from Nakayama to get out of it in time. And Yamamoto almost seizing the chance to get into second. 
before he then became impeded by the same car in the next corner. So very unfortunate. Now they're dealing with the Subaru. Yamamoto is having to wait another corner before getting the move done. But you've just got to stay hungry. Naoki Yamamoto's just got to be prepared for whatever is thrown at him. And the, uh, admittedly, the move at turn two, it was on. It was on. He had the line and he had the momentum to get past the Supra. Unfortunately, there was a Nissan in his way. So the chance disappeared again. And he might not get another one for another lap or two. However, having said that, he's got past the Lamborghini a lot quicker than Nakayama did. So Yamamoto lining up another chance and not far away now is Ashura. They both got held up big time. So Ashura and Chio are going to be in the... Oh, look at this. The Leon Mercedes has caught right up to the green brake. Can they steal second place back? Having been about a dozen seconds behind them, those tyres that they put on have definitely caught up the gap. Oh, and the Super is back in. Oh, is that uh, some sort of uh, problem there with the fire extinguisher? It looks like yeah, it might maybe be... They Oh, look, the engine's it's overheated. I think it's an engine failure. Oh, engine no. failure, gone. Here comes Giuliano Alesi, thundering on to the back of a Tsushi Miyake. If he gets past him, he may even have time to go for Katsumasa Chio as well. This could be an absolute rout for Toyota. Go on, Giuliano. This is where you need to make it happen. Stay with that Tsushi. Stay with that Tsushi. Now get squeezed. Oh, and Tsushi no. squeezes him right off the road. Oh, surely wow. a Tsushi Miyake is going to get a penalty for that. Well, that's, that's, yeah, Here comes that, Baguette. That, that did look... Hiramine, I think he's oh, apologies. Yeah, Hiramine gets through. Oh dear, oh dear. For position, for position, but Hiramine's a lap down. Um, so Lacey stays in P7, but he looked like he had the move pretty much done, didn't he? Like you said, did he get a penalty for that? I'm not 100% sure. Hiramine oh. putting two wheels on the grass as he tries to get ahead. Giuliano Lacey trying to follow Hiramine through as well. And, and that's because Critton. Done. Yeah, Critton's already got the move done, done as they get to the braking point past Yoshida. Brilliant work from Critton, but now Giuliano Lacey's trying to come through. BMW have got the job done, they're on the podium. Seiji are absolutely ecstatic. And Nicholas Critton has proved his worth on his debut in Super GT. Fantastic driving from Nicholas Critton. And here's Lila Wadu round the outside of Kobayashi. Wadu in exactly the right position to make this work. And she's not frightened to give it a go. Beautiful. Lila Wadu gets the move there on Kobayashi. That is a masterclass overtake and on her debut as well. Goodness me, what a traffic jam we've got on the back straight now as Giuliano Alessi again attacks at Sushimiyaki round the outside. Don't you dare shove me off a second time, but now they've got traffic to deal with and it's not going to be easy. Ooh, oh, Alessi is nice. nerfed there by me. I was going to say, it's got Mary and the Oliveira squabbling over position in the exact piece of tarmac that he wanted to use to get past Miyake, so he had to back out of it. And then Mary just giving him a little love tap for good measure. Alessi oh, and he's taking it back. He's, he's riled up here, isn't he? He's, he's, he's managed to get past the, the Nissan there finally, but he's, he's probably lost his best opportunity to get ahead of the, the, the Nissan because he's only got one lap left. And look at the look at the distance he's lost there. He's going to be fuming. Very unfortunate, but Giuliano can't afford to use his car as a battering ram to get past the GT300s in response because that's not going to be looked on very favourably by the team at all. Perfect drive. What a run from Shotsuboy and Kenzie Amashita. They win the first race of the Automax Super GT Series 2024. Excellent work. Nakayama holds on for second place. It's a Toyota 1-2. And on their debut, the Honda Civic grabs a podium. Brilliant work from the Stanley Honda crew. And we wait now for the GT300 victors to come through. A perfect run from Yuichitsumi and Hibiki Taira who have opened the gauntlet for the Muta Ingin crew. A very smooth operation from them. They were not the fastest in qualifying over the two aggregate times, but they kept themselves in the mix. They looked after the tyres best. That's what they needed to do. The Muta Ingin car comes through. It's a victorious day for Toyota in both categories. Excellent work from the Toms Supra and the Muta Ingin GR86. What a dominant day for Toyota in Super GT on the first day of the season. Here's the provisional result then for the first race of the Autobach Super GT Series 2024. Tom Supra take the victory with the Saad car getting its first podium for a long time. The Stanley Civic breaks even and grabs a podium. The Civic on its debut and the Soroma Supra and the two Nissans of the Nismo crew. The Deloitte Supra just missing out on top six. The ARTA Mugans both making it into the top 10 ahead of the Modulo Civic. So, a solid debut for the Civic Type RGT, but plenty of work still to do for sure. 
It's going to be an interesting one. A lot of debriefing to go after this uh, first race of the season, particularly at the Impul squad. Not very competitive in the end and dropping out in the closing stages, essentially, of the running down in the 11th place mark. And of course, there were two non-finishes. The Muta Inging GR86 takes the GT300 win ahead of the Leon Pyramid Mercedes. The Study BMW podium on Davey Van Nicholas Britton. The Green Brave Super are so close to the rostrum. The LC500H fighting back beautifully to P5. K-Tunes Nexus ahead of the Metal Live and j -Lock Lamborghinis. And then the Good Smile Mercedes ahead of the Unirobo Bluegrass Ferrari. Top 10 in the first race of the season for them. The Realize Nissan in front of the Ponos Ferrari. Kay Consolina returning in Lilo Wadu making her debut. The Sintium Corsa Supra from the Shade Racing, the Hoppy Supra, the Up Garage NSX, the Iwata Racing, the Hell Motorsports on its debut, the D-Station Vantage into the top 20 despite missing most of Saturday and the run at Bravo Nissan into the top 20 as well. No retirements at all other than the Subaru BRZ in GT300. A very competitive race all the way throughout. Unfortunate for the Mac 5, should easily have been in the fight for the top 10. And here's the championship order as a result of that first race weekend of the season. Subaru and Yamashita obviously picking up three bonus points for their pole position in qualifying, as well as the 20 for taking the race victory. So Gucci and Nakayama, six back, a further five back for Yamamoto and Makino. GT300, it's a fairly similar story, although Satsumi and Tyro scored two points for going second in qualifying, so they have 22. Just four more than Gamu and Shinohara, who scored three bonuses for their pole position. Ara and Kruten have 11, Yoshida and Nanaka have eight, Kotaka and Nakamura in the LC500H have six. So there we are then. The first round of the championship concludes in style for Toyota. Domo arigato to Jamie Klein and to everybody here who has been part of the broadcast. Uh, we are going to let them get busy with the fizzy on the podium here at Okiyama and have a fantastic Japanese party as we get ready for the next round of the championship on motorsport.tv, which is in three weeks' time, the Golden Classic on the 3rd and 4th of May. On Friday, it is qualifying. On Saturday, it is the three-hour race, and we are going to be in for an absolutely fantastic showdown in the second race of the championship. It's only just taking shape. Toyota are kings for the moment. How long can they stay there? When will Honda get their first win with the Civic? When will Nissan bounce back? You'll have to tune in in three weeks time at the Golden Classic at Fuji Speedway to find out. From Jake Sanson, from Jamie Klein, and from everybody here at Okiyama, Domo Origato, sayonara, and we'll let the boys on the podium get busy with the fizzy. Enjoy, boys.